a stand, no doubt, is familiar to many of us, and we're familiar with Paul's readers. And Paul made this. He said, the believer's body is the temple of God. But now if there is no resurrection, then eat, drink, be merry, or tomorrow we die. But you know what? That's not the first time that was mentioned. When you go back to Isaiah 22 and verse 13, Isaiah had already mentioned this. And so what Paul is saying, it was time for the Corinthians to wake up and to clean up. Because one day there was going to be a resurrection and there will be a resurrection. So everybody need to get ready for the resurrection. Don't let nobody steal your crime. And this is what Paul is saying. We need to wake up. We need to clean up because there is a resurrection. And then there are another passage from the book of Proverbs. Proverbs 13 and verse 20. And uh, here, the wise man Solomon said, he who walked with the wise men will be wise. Now, if you don't walk with the wise, you're not going to be wise. Amen. But if you walk with the wise, you'll be wise, but the companion of fools will be destroyed. Now, you can hang around with the fools if you want. <laughs> but eventually, you're going to be distraught. So now, what is the real quality of friendship or companionship? Love is one of the great qualities of friendship or companionship. And True love will produce loyalty. A friend loveth at all times. In Proverbs 17, 17 in the NIV. And there is a friend who sticketh closer than a brother in Proverbs 18, 24. Amen. And so sometimes our friends do more for us. You see, in an emergency, than our relatives do. Yeah, now, when you really got a friend, you have been blessed by God. Amen. So I want you to go with me now to the 18th chapter of the book of 1 Samuel. Right. And this is where we're going to deal with the friendship of Jonathan and David. I don't know whether you're familiar with the friendship of Jonathan and David, but I know one thing, it was a friendship that you don't find even in the church today. And I know that there are some things that people have said about this friendship. I was looking at one uh, uh, commentator, and he was saying that this was a sexual encounter that David and Jonathan had. And in this sexual encounter, that's why David made the statement that their love was greater than that of any woman. But I want you to know that, and he said that God endorses a homosexual relationship. But God does it. You see, you go back to the Leviticus, the 18th chapter, and God tell you that he hates it. It's an abomination to him. When you read Romans, the first chapter, he lets you know that it is an abomination, and God cannot endure sin. He's too holy to endure sin. So I struck that out you know, right from the beginning because I know 
that God is not a God that endorsed sin. And then when Paul talked in 1 Corinthians, the sixth chapter, did he not condemn it? Yes. He said there was a time when some of you, the Corinthians, were in that condition. But he said, now you have been washed, you have been sanctified, you've been justified. Why? Because they've obeyed the gospel within it of that condition that they are in, and now they're new creations in Jesus Christ. They could not continue in their old style of life that they had. Now, let's look at the 18th chapter of the book of 1 Samuel. And let's read through verse 4. And it came to pass. I'm reading from the King James Version. And it came to pass when he had made an end of speaking unto Saul that the soul of Jonathan was knitted with the soul of David. And Jonathan loved him as his own soul. And Saul took him that day and would not let him go no more home to his father's house. Then Jonathan and David made a covenant because he loved him as his own son. And Jonathan stripped himself of the robe that was upon him and gave it to David and his garments, even to his sword and to his bow and to his girdle, a bed. So David and Jonathan made a covenant that day. See, they loved one another. And I want you to know that Saul took David into his home as though he were one of his children. But a little later, envy, jealousy, propped up in the heart of Saul. And that relationship changed. But the relationship with Jonathan and David never changed. Now, as David moved through the days of his life, and David really needed a friend. Yes, sir. And let me tell you, when you really need a friend, if you're God's child, do you know that you'll never have a greater friend than the Lord Jesus Christ? Amen. But God will send somebody in this life to be your friend when you really need a friend. And so when David moved through the days of his life, he was a man truly blessed by the Lord. See, God was gracious to David in that he placed in his life certain people on whom David could lean during the hard times of his life. And this young man had some hard times in life, not because of anything that he had done, but because of what God had blessed him with within his life. And so the people provided a strong support system to David. And they helped him to make it through many dark hours in his life. <coughs> David went through some difficult times in his life. If you've ever read the Bible about the life of David, you know this. Yes. One of the most precious and profound of the relationship that David enjoyed was the friendship that he had with King Saul's son, Jonathan. Jonathan was a true of God to young David. In fact, the very name Jonathan means Jehovah has given. That's the meaning of Jonathan's name. Jonathan was strategically placed in David's life at a very time that David needed a genuine friend. You see, Jonathan's father was David's greatest enemy. And this young man needed a friend. Jonathan proved to be the greatest and the dearest friend that David would know in his entire life. You see, and it, it, it's a shame <clears throat> and a disgrace that some have tried to take this precious 
this godly relationship between that two men and to make it into something that it is not. Some have taken the word from 2 Samuel 126. Look at 2 Samuel chapter 1 and verse 26. And the Bible says, I am distressed for the my brother Jonathan. Very pleasant as thou been unto me. Thy love to me was wonderful. Asking the love of women. Now this is where some go to try to prove that it was a love relationship between John and us. But it wasn't a love relationship. Somebody twisted this scripture yeah. and tried to imply that David and Jonathan were lovers. They were lovers, but not sexually in kind of in love. They were lovers because both of them feared God and they respected one another. Therefore, they became a person that were knitted together. That's those were knitted together. And let me tell you, when something is knitted together, there's no sin. I remember when my mother used to knit. That was no sin. Get nothing split at the spin. Because there were no sins. And so there was no place for Jonathan David to separate in their love. Because their love was knitted together. And this is the kind of love that we ought to have with the Lord Jesus Christ. You see, as you pass through this life, you will make hundreds and even thousands of acquaintances. But you will have few real friends. Hear me now. You will have few real friends. In fact, if you develop two or three genuine friendships during a lifetime, you bless by God. Amen. And when you got a friend, you need to hold on. So what is a real friend? Well, one person said, a friend, a true friend, the first person who comes in when the whole world is gone out. That's a friend. Then another said, a friend is someone who understands your past. You know, some people don't let, never let you forget your past. But a real friend is someone who understands your past, believes in your future, and accepts you today just as you are. I'm talking about a friend. <coughs> we ought to praise the Lord for the few genuine friends that we possess in our life. Now I want to examine this precious friendship between David and Jonathan. And I want you to see the greatness of that friendship. But I want you to see the even greater friendship that is pictured in these verses. For here, we can see a portrait of the love that Jesus Christ has for the saints of God. You see, the saints of God have a genuine friend in Jesus Christ. You know, we sing a song, what a friend we have in Jesus. We can see that. And as we go to the book of John, we'll see that. And by observing the signs of friendship as they are given in the word of God, we can understand something about the greatness of Christ's love for his people. You see, Jonathan was a prince and David was a palmer. David was a nobody. Jonathan was somebody. And sometimes we know bodies, 
needs somebody <laughs> to help us. And so we can examine the friendship that David and God with Jonathan and seek to understand the friendship that we enjoy with Jesus Christ. Amen. We have a great friend in Jesus. So I want you to look at the love. Jonathan's love was known as an uncommon love. Now, when I say an uncommon love, look at verse 4. It tells us that Jonathan removed his princely robe and he placed it on David. And then he gave David his sword. And then he gave David his girdle or his bed. Now that was a true friend. But that was a reason for that. Jonathan willingly laid aside the symbol of his position as a crown priest of Israel and gave it to David. And when someone saw David on that day, no doubt they thought it was Jonathan. Because David had on the garments that Jonathan would ordinarily have, have worn. But you see, this is a picture of a love that involves personal, profound sacrifice. It is a picture of uncommon love. This kind of love can also be seen in 1 Samuel, the 23rd chapter. Look at 1 Samuel, the 23rd chapter, and look at verse 17. 1 Samuel 23 and verse 17. And the king said unto the footman that stood by him. First Samuel 23, 23, that's 22, 23. And look at verse 17. And he said, and he said unto him, fear not, for the hand of Saul my father shall not find thee. And thou shalt be king over Israel, and I shall be next unto thee. And that I also saw my father knowing thee. Now Jonah is, Jonathan is saying unto David, I know that you're going to be king. Yes, sir. See, Jonathan revealed to David that he knows that David will ascend to the throne of Israel after his father. But you know what? Jonathan is not jealous of David. He, he, he intended to stand by David. Even as David assumed the throne that should have belonged to Jonathan. And again, that is a picture of selfless personal sacrifice. He was willing to admit that David is going to be king, but he still loved him. Don't forget the covenant that they had made in chapter 18. He still loved it. Now it's going to be different when it comes to Jonathan's father. Jonathan consistently placed David ahead of himself. And that's what a true friend always does. You remember when somebody asked Jesus in Matthew 22, what is the greatest, you know, when they Pharisees and Pharisees had had their battle, and, and Jesus had whipped the Pharisees. So now the Pharisees said, well, let, let us take over. We will get it. And so they came to encamp Jesus and said unto him, Master, what is the greatest commandment? And Jesus said, well, the greatest commandment is number one to love the Lord thy God with all of thy heart, thy soul, and thy strength. Amen. And then he said, Now the second is like unto it love your neighbor as you love yourself. You can't really separate friendship from neighborship. 
All right. Amen. And so Jesus said, he didn't say you cannot love yourself, but he said you love your neighbor as you love yourself. And this was the kind of relationship that Jonathan and David had. And this, you see, is a picture of the love that Jesus has for his people. Just as Jonathan <coughs> laid aside the royal robe and gave it to David, Jesus has done the same for us. 